Many people consider H.P. Lovecraft's work as a forerunner for modern horror fiction, as his work served as a pioneer for many horror genres and styles to come. With his out-of-the-box strangeness and almost instantly recognizable style, his distinct work has become ubiquitous in the history of horror. This is the Lovecraftian Entity Iceberg. Before we dive in, I think it's beneficial to briefly explain what we'll be covering. H.P. Lovecraft is widely regarded as the father of the cosmic horror genre, to which Lovecraftian horror has become synonymous with. It's a subgenre of horror fiction and weird fiction that employs the horror of the unknowable or incomprehensible more than elements of gore or shock. The work often emphasizes themes of cosmic dread, forbidden or dangerous knowledge, insanity or madness, non-human interactions or influences on humanity, fate and inevitability, as well as the risks associated with related scientific discoveries. Due to the nature of the horror deriving from the aspect of the unknowable, and because they are mostly based on written mediums, it can be sometimes challenging to accurately describe the aesthetics or properly visualize the physical characteristics of some monsters. So much of this video will consist of audible descriptions, but I'll do my best to add image and video examples that can potentially help to visualize each monster. I'll order each of these entities by their search volume, except the final few which just didn't have enough search volume to accurately measure. But with all that said, let's begin. Cthulhu Far and away the most popular of H.P. Lovecraft's creations, Cthulhu, the godlike entity, is said to be a manifestation of destruction and chaos. In the interpretations of Cthulhu, its appearance is that of a giant humanoid being, often with cephalopodic and arthropodal features. The creature has a large, bulbous sack for a head, with many extensive tentacles in place of a mouth and jaw. Despite being portrayed often as this characteristic, it can change its shape and size at will often growing to gargantuan sizes. It's been described as the size of a man, ranging to the size of continents, with an infinite amount of long and powerful limbs to do its bidding. The entity has influenced the formation of a worldwide cult, with followers across the globe. Cthulhu is said to be the descendant of a being known as yogg sothoth and has a number of offspring itself. Outer God Throughout the Cthulhu mythos, there are various cosmically significant entities known as the Outer Gods. While they are different from the Great Old Ones, the distinctions between the two may be beyond our realm of comprehension. Most Outer Gods reside beyond and outside of Earth and our solar system, while only a small percent actually have taken up residence on our planet. The only thing reported about their location is the Outer Voids outside of Thought and Existence, and what some call the Graveside Beyond Time. Despite most of them not living amongst us, they still exert their influence from deep space and beyond with tremendous and powerful psychic abilities. Their goals and agenda are beyond our realm of comprehension, oftentimes seeking the extermination of all life. Because of this, most consider these entities malevolent, but some believe that their intentions are much more grandiose. The origin of the Outer Gods is unknown, with theories abound from having always existed to created by an ancient creature of vast evil. Nyarlathotep This Outer God entity exists within the Cthulhu Mythos and is often described as the Crawling Chaos. This entity was created by Lovecraft, but has seen a number of appearances in other authors' work and games based on the Cthulhu Mythos. Unlike many other entities who are exiled to certain areas, or exist in eternal slumber and dreams, Nyarlathotep is a nomad that frequently wanders the earth, often seen in the form of a normal human being, most commonly a tall, skinny, joyful man. But this being is also said to be capable of assuming manifestations of unimaginable grotesque horror, oftentimes invoking insanity upon sight of it. 
but when this entity wishes to pass for a normal human being, it is most certainly capable of it, fluently speaking many human languages naturally and convincingly. This being lives in deceit, employing covert propaganda to achieve its nefarious objectives. These objectives are tasks that he must accomplish, serving as the slave of its master, Azathoth. Nyarlathotep delights in spreading lunacy to populations of unassuming civilizations. It's been prophesized by some that this entity would eventually go on to destroy humanity at large and annihilate the planet entirely. Azathoth This creature is one of the multiple outer gods on this list. Azathoth has been called a number of different names throughout history. Nuclear Chaos, the Blinded Ear God, the Demon Sultan, the Deep Dark, and the Cold One. Azathoth is quite literally impossible to physically describe, as each and every being sees it differently and is constantly changing. Although according to some reports, it's been described as a gigantic, sensitive black hole. Azathoth's name can be found in the Necronomicon, and the simple act of hearing or reading its name has been known to cause other entities to shudder at the thought. Its name stands for a primal horror simply too horrible to describe. Certain tribes of beings have been known to worship the creature in awe of its unmatchable and unimaginable horrors it flicks upon others. Dagon This entity is a deity that serves as the governing agent of the Deep Ones, the amphibious humanoid race that inhabits the Earth's deep waters. It has been also called Father Dagon and the consort of Mother Hydra. Deep Ones live long lives as they age, and can eventually grow to massive proportions. The oldest fossil evidence of Deep Ones was clocked in at nearly 50 feet tall, but Dagon is said to be a much larger variant of the Deep Ones. Cults of both men and Deep Ones would arise that venerate the being as divinity, with accounts of Dagon having been reported since antiquity. Yog sothoth this is both a cosmic entity as well as an outer god. This fabled entity was called such awe-provoking names as the All-in-One, the All-Encompassing, and the Opener of the Way. It was born of the outer god Nameless Mist and serves as the progenitor and ancestor of Cthulhu, Haster the Unspeakable and the Vormi. He also serves as the father of Wilbur Whateley. Much like many other entities on this list, Yogg-Sothoth can take many forms, however he is most often depicted as a mass of glowing orbs, sometimes with eyes or tendrils. Yogg-Sothoth is considered omniscient and forever locked outside of the universe at large, suggesting that it knows the entirety of all things existing outside of our realm. This entity has several appearances in other media like Doctor Who and Marvel. Shogoth this creature first appeared in Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness. A Shoggoth takes the form of a sentient blob of self-shaping gelatinous flesh. It can assume the shape of anything it desires, but in its neutral state, it has a plethora of eyes, mouths, and pseudopodia. A Shoggoth is said to be able to move at high speeds, like that of a speeding train. They were bred by the Elder Things, to serve them as slaves and laborers. Shagoth have been known to destroy their opponents by surrounding them and creating enough suction to literally pull them limb from limb. This is exactly how they slayed the Elder Things during their uprising. They possess a terrible odor that surpassed even their creator's own repulsive smells. They were bred to be mindless, but over time they developed consciousness through mutations. After they slaughtered their creators, they went on to develop their own civilizations. Haster Otherwise known as the King in Yellow, but most notoriously known as Haster the Unspeakable. He was first portrayed as a loving shepherd god, and was only mentioned once in Lovecraft stories, the Whisperer in Darkness. When defined as a great old one, he's a spawn of yogg sothoth and half-brother of Cthulhu. Some authors have labeled Haster as the Nameless Mist, the progenitor of several other cosmic entities. Haster has several avatars. The first is known as the Feaster from Afar, 
a black, shriveled, flying monstrosity with many tentacles tipped with razor-sharp talons capable of piercing a victim's skull to siphon out its brain. Another avatar appears as the King in Yellow, a mysterious and malevolent supernatural entity with an eerie correlated symbol called the Yellow Sign. Despite being amorphous, Haster is said to appear as a vast, vaguely octopoid being similar to his half-niece, Cthilla. Great Old One These beings exist from the fabric of the universe, virtually impossible to be destroyed. They grow to be colossal, wicked monstrosities whose ancient roots delve deep into the past of the cosmos. These beings think in a manner that's incomprehensible to humans, as they have little to no concern over their actions' consequences upon who they perceive as lesser beings. Seeing their true appearance has been known to cause insanity, but even without seeing it, they're still deadly, as the Great Old Ones have been known to influence the minds of sentient beings even while they're asleep. Even though they are typically restricted to the planets that they reside on, they can be found all throughout the universe. Cults have developed and revere the Great Old Ones, to which they are able to prey upon. Dunvich Horror The eponymously named story from which this creature first appeared is widely regarded as one of Lovecraft's foundational works. This creature's true name is Yogg Waitley and is typically invisible to the naked eye. However, with the use of arcane powder, a forbidden recipe found in the Necronomicon, several individuals have been able to briefly gain vision of this horrific nightmare being. The unfathomably grotesque entity was so foreign and bizarre to the human mind that upon sight it quickly warped the mind to near-complete insanity, unable to speak whatsoever. When described, it appears as a colossal beast larger than a barn, quite easily capable of swallowing many large animals and people in a single bite. It was said to be made of wiggling strings that are tied together and shaped like a chicken egg, with a dozen legs as big as barrels, massive eyes all over it, and more than ten gray mouths of trunks on its side with blue rings over them as big as oven pipes. On top of the creature there lies a half face lacking a chin with red eyes and white frizzly albino hair. What was left of the face was said to resemble the face of his grandfather. Accounts also stated that it didn't appear completely solid either, almost as a jelly-like substance, and everywhere it traveled it left a wake of a nasty, dark, viscous substance. This creature's mother, an albino human woman named Lavinia Waitley, used an incomplete copy of the Necronomicon to call forth Yog sothoth Lavinia would become impregnated by the entity, who would later give birth to the twins Wilbur Waitley and the Dunwich Horror. While growing up, the Dunwich Horror was kept secret from most and fed on cattle for sustenance, draining their blood and eventually consuming them whole. The stench of this beast was so repulsive that it alone kept many passers-by at bay. After his mother and grandfather died, his brother Wilbur cared for him until he too died. With no one left to care for the creature, it went on a rampage away from the Waitley farmhouse, introducing the world to its foreign viscous substance and meadows with herds of mutilated cattle with their blood completely drained. This creature was eventually banished to the realm of its father by a spell from Henry Armitage and his colleagues. His last words were a plea of help to its father. Night Gaunt These entities are a flying species that reside in the dreamlands of Earth. They have a long, slender humanoid body with a pair of curved horns, large, silent, bat-like wings, a long tail with the caricaturistic pointy devil tail, and a blank face void of the facial features on a human being. They worship and exist in reverence towards Nodens as their lord and master. While these entities aren't as prevalent as many others on this list, we do know the origin of these entities. The idea arrived to Lovecraft when he was a child, in the form of a recurring nightmare he would experience. It contained these devil-like beings that were more frightening to him simply because they never spoke or showed any emotion whatsoever, only a cold, blank, expressionless face. Hounds of Tindalos 
These unique creatures are said to inhabit the angles of time, whereas humans and other earthly life forms live within the curves of time. There is very little information known about their appearances, as once a hound of Tindalos has chosen to attack, any survivor is unlikely. There have only been a handful of accounts of their appearances. One account described them as having a hollow proboscis used for feeding, and they will continuously spew forth a horrendous blue pus-like substance. While they are called hounds, it's believed they hold very few similarities to the earth canine we are familiar with. What we do know about the hounds is that they are an extra-dimensional predatory creature that's capable of materializing at any point in space and time to attack and feed upon victims. It's said that they may appear wherever angles or corners may be found, especially those that are sharper than 120 degrees. When these creatures break into our universe, they are preceded by a thick smoke pouring from the corner that they are about to arrive at. Then, slowly their head and body will start to emerge from beyond the corner. They are hunters of time travelers, creatures that track down victims across multiple layers of space and time to stalk their victims until their opportunity arises. Yig. This entity was dubbed the Father of Serpents, a god in Central America and the Southern American states. He would most often manifest as a reptile-like humanoid or simply as a gigantic snake with human arms. This being was said to fiercely protect his serpentine offspring, punishing anyone who even considered harming them. Some of his punishments were cruel and twisted, like forcing those who wronged his serpents to hallucinate and take the lives of their own loved ones. Yig has been described as the dark prototype for the more benevolent Quetzalcoatl and Kukulkan. Legend of this entity precedes it, as many people in the regions were simply afraid to discuss or even mention its name. However, this was not always the case, and was long ago worshipped. When a large influx of white immigrants arrived at the southeastern regions, a series of unnatural tragedies struck as a result of Yig's influence. This entity was not always malicious, in fact he rarely was as long as there was no harm done to his offspring but he would occasionally enter a feeding frenzy, making certain tribes to submit offerings or loudly drum constantly in order to attempt to drive him away from their homelands. Elder Thing These entities stand around six feet tall. It's said they appear to be a large, oval-shaped barrel with starfish-like appendages at both ends. The horrific creature's top appendage has a head with five eyes, five eating tubes, and a set of prismatic cilia to see without light. And at the bottom of the barrel has five limbs used for walking and other forms of motion. These creatures also had five leathery retractable wings, used both for atmospheric flight as well as sailing through the empty ether of space. Unlike many other beings of the mythos, the Elder Things were composed of normal terrestrial matter. Though their blood was a thick green substance that had a vile, indescribable stench that could travel great lengths. This odor often caused other creatures to become hostile, violent, and provoked violence. Their thick exterior was strong enough to withstand the pressures from the deepest oceans as well as the vacuum of space. They are said to arrive on Earth over a billion years ago, stated as the first alien species upon the planet. It's also been theorized that these beings were the source of terrestrial life as we know it, creating it through their arcane experimentation. Using these same methods, they genetically modified the Shagaths to serve as their slaves, tasked with building vast cities around the planet. When humanity finally began evolving into our more modern state, the Elder Things had already degenerated as a race, having lost certain abilities like spaceflight with their membranous wings. Eventually, other alien entities began arriving on Earth, including the Migo and Cthulhu starspawn. As a result of this, many wars were sparked between the races, though it's still unclear who first initiated the attacks. The Shagath beings that were created to serve as slaves would eventually rebel against the Elder Things from the inside. The Elder Things were forced to retreat to the continent now known as Antarctica. It's presumed that when the Ice Age began, the Elder Things faced their civilization's collapse. 
There exists only a small number of existing communities of Elder Things living in the deepest parts of the oceans. Some dead and frozen Elder Things can still be found in the remains of their Antarctic city. Some forbidden texts suggest that there may exist a band of non-degenerated Elder Things still living amongst the stars. Sathagawa This entity is also known as the Father of Night, as well as the Sleeper of Inkai for good reason. This godlike old one is often found asleep, as he's remarkably lazy and refuses to leave his chambers unless he's forced. When unlucky travelers are unfortunate enough to encounter and awake this creature, Sathagwa will either consume the traveler or a sacrifice that they are willing to make, in which case the sacrifice will be consumed instead. After this late night snack, the entity will resume its hibernation until the next time it's awoken, to which it will feed once again. Though its exact description differs between sources, some refer to this creature as bat or sloth-like, an amorphous, toad-like god creature, while others describe it as a toad-like gargoyle with hundreds of rudimentary feet. Evidence suggests that it can alter its shape as it will adapt to whatever environment it is in. Though it doesn't need to adapt too often, as Sathagwa's will is carried out by the formless spawn, polymorphic entities made of a black goo. They can assume any shape and attack targets in nearly every conceivable way. Sathagwa and these formless spawn have a number of cameos throughout media. Wilbur Whateley This entity is born as the twin brother of the Dunwich Horror, also known as Yog Whateley. His father was the cosmic entity Yog Sathoth with an albino human mother. The birth of this entity called forth a rumbling in the hills, heralded by incessant barking of dogs in the area. This remained constant throughout the remainder of Wilbur's life, as dogs continued to show an instinctual hatred for him. Wilbur was brought into this world as a notoriously hideous man, described as a dark, goatish looking infant. Despite this, Wilbur rapidly grew both physically and mentally. When he was 7 months old, he could walk unassisted, he could talk at 11 months, and appeared as a teenager with facial hair before he even turned 5. Wilbur often wore overly large covering clothing, perhaps in an attempt to mask his overwhelming odor, one of the defining traits of the Great Old Ones. Wilbur had reached a staggering height of 9 feet tall by the time he was 15, and he was still growing. His uncle taught him a plethora of evil magic, and to worship and summon banned beings. Before his grandfather died, he was tasked with the responsibility of caring for his twin, as well as ensuring he opened the gates to yogg sothoth by finding the complete Necronomicon. Wilbur met his untimely end while attempting to steal this book due to a savage attack from a guard dog. Upon this, we learned that instead of blood in his body, he possessed a greenish-yellow substance. His abdomen sprouted greenish-gray appendages with red-sucking mouths. His back was covered with black and yellow markings, and instead of a tail, he had a strange trunk-like protrusion resembling something like a throat. The bottom half of his body was completely covered in coarse black fur over dinosaur-like legs, and a very basic rudimentary eye was located on each of his hips. With Wilbur's final breath, he recited the excerpt from the Necronomicon for which he had been searching for. Immediately after this, his corpse disintegrated into a sticky white mass, revealing no true skeletal structure. The Deep One This amphibious, ocean-dwelling humanoid race has scaly, fish-like skin with feathered gills and webbed hands and feet to help them swim although they are capable of living on land indefinitely. They have heads that resemble a fish or frog, and they have a pair of large eyes that grant them stellar vision for the dark depths of the ocean. The Deep Ones can only die if they are slain or killed in some way, as they are essentially immortal otherwise, allowing their continuous growth to become truly monstrous. Between their functional immortality their seemingly endless wealth that had been lost to the ocean, and their affinity for mating with human beings, 
some humans have come to worship the Deep Ones. Some communities even going so far as to form relationships with the Deep Ones, exchanging gifts from the ocean in exchange for certain promises that eventually allowed the compromise of the community. Although the origin of the Deep Ones is unknown, we do know that they have existed with advanced technology long before mankind first evolved into its current state. It's also known that the Deep Ones have bred Shagoths for labor purposes. Nodens This being is the deity elder god and master of the Night Gaunts. He has a long, flowing white beard and hair, and functions as a somewhat benevolent being. Accounts of him often depict him leading his huge hunting chariot made from a colossal seashell drawn by many of Earth's historical monsters. He stands opposed to the Great Old Ones, as well as Nearlathotep, not for mortality reasons, simply because he enjoys the thrill of hunting and they provide the best challenge. Though he also does enjoy the sport of hunting a giant flying creature known as the Shantak. Nodens has been known to occasionally assist lesser beings, again not for morality reasons, mostly because it thwarts Nearlathotep's plans. A temple dedicated to Nodens was found at Lydney Park in Great Britain. It features a mosaic where the god is served by two long-necked creatures, leading many to theorize as a potential origin of the Loch Ness monster. Cthulhu. This creature, also known as the Kraken or the Secret One, has the appearance of a gigantic, red-bodied, black-ringed, and six-eyed octopus with comparatively small wings. Her natural form features eight arms like an octopus. She can extrude or retract additional ones as well. Some accounts detail her having up to 12 arms at once. Each of her arms is equipped with dozens of five-inch razor-sharp claws. Though, like her father, she's able to alter her body proportions at will, such as enlarging her claws or wings for various purposes. She is the offspring of the Great Cthulhu and his androgynous mate, Idiya. Cthulhu plays a major role in Cthulhu's agenda. Should Cthulhu ever die, his daughter Cthulhu has been given the ability to give birth to him once again. Her safety has been entrusted to the Deep Ones. She's known as the Secret One because the cult attempts to hide all information about the goddess to protect the Great Cthulhu's backup plan. At one point, she is captured by researchers who mistook her for a rare, undiscovered octopus, to which they attempt to impregnate her with self-insemination. And on another instance, she took on a more humanoid form or avatar as a possible bride for Haster the Unspeakable. Katanathoa. This entity was the firstborn offspring of Cthulhu and Idiya. It took the form of a gigantic, amorphous, godlike being whose appearance was so unsettling that anyone who saw the creature, or even a photograph of it, would immediately become completely and permanently immobilized, essentially becoming a living mummy, whose skin and organs would tighten up and become a leathery texture perfectly preserving it indefinitely. And worst of all, victims of this paralysis remain fully cognizant and aware of their fate, unable to move even in the slightest bit. The only thing that cured these wretched souls' fates was complete annihilation of the brain. While Gatanathoa was spawned on the planet Zoth, ancient aliens, theorized to be the Migo, would transport the entity to Earth, where it was entombed beneath Mount Yadith Go, which currently resides at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, where it remains to this day. Many attempts were made on Gatanathoa's life, with magical scrolls to help defend against its cursing appearance, none of which were successful. Dimensional Shambler These entities are a race of monsters from another dimension. They appear as short, crouching creatures with tight, gray, mummy-like skin. Its head appears to be semi-ape-like and semi-canine with crooked, stained fangs. It has a pair of deeply recessed eyes which only appear as yellow slits, and its long arms are capped with massive claws. Though these beings seem to be composed of a material unknown to man, making it an immaterial object, 
unable to touch or be touched by beings in our plane. They first appeared in the horror in the museum, and it's been theorized that these beings are the very same race of creatures known as the Hunters from Beyond, which is a tale that predates these Lovecraftian beings by a single year. We don't know much about the Dimensional Shamblers other than what their namesake implies. They are capable of fluidly traveling between planes and worlds of the cosmos, constantly on the move to their next destination. It's uncertain if they are distinct interdimensional beings or simply constructs developed in the deep passages of time to serve a higher power. But regardless of their origin, they are now free to roam as they please. It's rumored that dimensional shamblers will occasionally serve the outer gods and great ones, but their individual motivations and purpose remains unknown. It's also theorized that they originally come from a lower dimension described as a long, gray, oozing plain beneath skies where the fumes of hell were writhing like a million ghostly and distorted dragons. They can be summoned to a dimension with certain spells or pure willpower, but they prefer the challenge of doing the hunting. They will use a series of short dimensional hops to close the gap between them and their prey. When close enough, they use a form of hypnosis to captivate the selected human and attempt to suck them into their own dimension, sometimes utilizing the collective power of multiple shamblers to retrieve strong-willed people. It's been said that humans that are sucked into this dimension inevitably sink into the gray ooze to have their minds and souls consumed wholly by the shamblers. Ron Tagoth this amphibious insectoid god being stands 15 foot tall and is said to appear Medusa-like. First appearing in the horror in the museum, Ron Tagoth inhabited an area of Alaska roughly 3 million years ago, before going into its hibernation-like trance. It was the final god to sleep and is thought to be the first god meant to wake. Its body was found in 1926 and found its way into a London-based museum. Not long after that, its body disappeared. The being is said to be shaped somewhat like a gigantic insect, with a massive barrel-shaped trunk with six appendages ending in claw-like pincers. It had a near-spherical head covered with filaments that resembled hair or feelers, as well as a tentacle-like proboscis and three small beady protruding eyes. Although few humans are aware of it today, it was once worshipped. Mother Hydra This colossal being appears as a massive humanoid entity with a fish-like face, flapping gills, and hardened Piscean skin. Alongside Dagon, Mother Hydra rules over the ocean-dwelling race of the Deep Ones. There are two prevailing theories for Dagon and Mother Hydra's origins. One suggests that they are a lesser form of great old ones, while another theory suggests that they are a vastly mutated deep one. But because they don't seem to show much supernatural power outside of their gargantuan size, as well as an unnaturally long lifespan, people tend to think that they are just mutated variants of the deep ones. Despite not being classified as great ones, they are still considered deities. Mother Hydra, Father Dagon, and the Great Cthulhu form the Holy Trinity of the Deep Ones, and are worshipped as such. Gloon Also known as the Corrupter of Flesh and the Master of the Temple, Gloon is typically described as a large, bloated, slug-like abomination with flaps of leathery skin hanging from its body. Though most of the time, this entity chooses to hide its true nature in the form of a beautiful Dionysian statue. There exists a somewhat homoerotic element to mankind's fascination with this false gloon appearance. It is eventually imprisoned on the lost continent of Atlantis, but was able to occasionally manifest its true form through avatars. Those who touch the statue of gloon are forced into strange dreams of cyclopean ruins beneath the sea. The dreamers will become infinitely obsessed with finding these ruins, to the point of drowning themselves in the act of finding it. While Gloon was never worshipped by humans, many sea-dwelling races showed a penchant towards his statues. Hunting Horror 
These ferocious creatures are said to resemble a gigantic flying serpent with dragon-like wings with a rubbery texture. Their heads and appendages, however, are very malformed to us, twisted and gruesome, always with razor-sharp claws and teeth. But from what we understand, these creatures' bodies alter and change over time, though we don't know the lengths of these changes. These creatures serve as attack dogs for Nyarlathotep and greatly oppose all that is good and light. A strong enough blast of light directed at them can immediately turn them into ash. But beyond their weakness to light, they are incredibly powerful foes, especially for the likes of human beings. Formless Spawn These beings are often found acting as guardians and protectors of secrets residing in temples dedicated to the Great Old Ones or in deep, sunless caverns. Not much is known about these beings and their origin. They can sometimes lie motionless for years at a time, heralding the arrival of a Great Old One. But when they are not motionless, they are capable of changing their form and shape in an instant. They've been seen as toad-like lumps of flesh or elongated creatures with hundreds of rudimentary legs but they can assume any conceivable form. They exist as a living, viscous liquid, giving credence to the other names people have called them, Black Slime, Fluid Ones, and Icarus. They can ooze through small cracks or holes, capable of finding a way through any obstacle. They are also capable of casting spells and magic by forming vocal organs to emanate strange sounds to recite spells, unrecognizable to most humans but their physical attacks are usually more than enough to cause damage, trampling targets, surrounding them and biting them, or simply crushing them with their powerful grasp. According to some accounts, these entities are also acidic and can dissolve human flesh with just the slightest touch. Nof Ke These beings are described as something like a polar bear with six long, powerful limbs a gigantic mouth of razor-sharp teeth, and a single, sharp, curved horn. It's known to be an air or water creature, and it's said it's empowered with blizzard summoning and temperature controlling abilities. They seem to be tied to Ron Tagoth in some manner, for whom they're often mistaken, even going so far as to worship him. This vicious race of beings were known to be brutal and even cannibalistic. They were eventually driven out of their homelands, and in later texts, the Nafke is referred to as a singular creature, suggesting its population had been drastically limited, bordering extinction. Although hairy reptilians are rare, texts about Nafke refer to it as being such a creature. Gobogeg This entity is also called the Twice Invoked, as well as the Moon Ladder. It appears as a colossal pillar of amorphous alien flesh. It had a cyclopean head featuring a central single eye. Whenever this being is summoned, it immediately causes a devastating earthquake that can be felt throughout entire continents. On top of this, Gobageg will immediately ascend upwards into the air, dragging up the entire continent in the process. Consequently, this usually causes the entire world to cave in on itself. More extreme cases of summoning this entity has reported to cause entire universes to implode. Not surprisingly, not much is known beyond this. Shathak Despite not knowing much about this entity, it went by a number of different names. The Mistress of the Abyssal Slime, as well as Death Reborn, being two of the more notorious monikers. While it cannot be confirmed, its appearance is said to be either a gigantic tentacle monster or an enormous blob of vicious slime. It existed as the wife of Sethagua and the mother of the great old one, Zvilpagua. Shethek and its two variants, Chushax and Zishake, were created by Clark Ashton Smith, but not much was created to expand upon the lore of these entries. Migo. These winged creatures possess massive claws, and their heads are covered in antennae. They are a technologically and scientifically advanced race originating from the planet Yugoth, which is implied to be the dwarf planet of Pluto. 
These beings are typically a pinkish color as fungoid crustacean-like entities. They're about five feet long with a number of paired appendages and a large pair of bat-like wings. The wings don't function quite as well on Earth, but they allow them to fluidly travel through the ether of outer space. These type of wings are not unique to this entity, suggesting that this may be the standard mode of interplanetary travel. When compared to humans and life on Earth, they are a completely alien species, with bodies that consist of a form of matter that doesn't occur naturally on Earth, which prevents them from appearing in photography, as their matter composition reflects light in a very unique manner. Despite this, they are said to appear most similar to fungi in terms of biological matters, with a crustacean-like exterior. Their natural method of communication is by the changing of colors of the antennae on their heads. They have been known to speak human languages as well, modifying their bodies in manners that allow them to speak. Despite this, they always seem to carry a buzzing sound when they speak, with a very unnatural voice. It's been said that the Migo have transported humans from Earth to their homeworld and beyond by removing their brain and placing it into a device called the Brain Cylinder, which can be attached to another external device that allows the brain to see, hear, think, and speak. The Migo revere a sacred design that can be found in one of the homeworld's moons, which holds a special place in the Necronomicon. These beings can sense the symbol and hunt down those who use it on Earth. Banu Thun, otherwise known as the Soul Chilling Ice God, was only briefly mentioned in the short story Correlated Contents. Not much is known about this entity. It's been described as a giant humanoid creature with a blue gray color hue and spikes of ice protruding from it. However, one sentiment held true in all accounts of this entity. Everywhere Banu traveled, a massive, record breaking blizzard and storm would follow. It's been suggested that it possessed the ability to control the weather, and that the blizzard it occupied was simply preferable or required for its own survival. Bokrug Bokrug, otherwise known as the Great Water Lizard, is a great old one that first appeared in The Doom That Came to Sarnath. This lake-dwelling deity sleeps in the calm waters of the lake that bordered the city of Sarnath. The humans of Sarnath violently slaughtered the population of nearby Ib and stole their god's idol. This provoked Bokrug, potentially awaking it from a slumber, as once a year thereafter, a strange ripple effect was picked up on by nearby residents. However, one millennium after the theft of the god's idol, a darkness began to descend from the moon, and a green fog rose up from the lake's surface to meet it. It's said that Bokrug arose and completely annihilated the city of Sarnath, not even leaving ruins of a civilization. The Thumha race that Bokrug governed rebuilt the city of Ib. Since then, the village and this deity have remained quiet. When others began hunting down the remains of the city of Sarnath, they only found a statue of Bokrug. These people took the statue back to their own society and began worshipping the deity. Shub Nigarath First appearing in The Last Test, this entity is referenced or called upon frequently, but never fully described. It carries many different names, the Black Goat with a Thousand Young, All Mother, Mother Goddess, the Mighty Mother, among other titles. This perverse fertility deity is an outer god who is said to appear as an evil cloud-like entity. It's described as an enormous mass which extrudes black tentacles and short writhing goat legs. It has a mouth that constantly oozes out slime, and at the same time, small creatures are continuously spat out. Many of these small creatures are immediately consumed back into the dark mass. She would become the wife of both Yog sothoth as well as Haster the Unspeakable, presumably helping to create any offspring of both entities. It's been said that of all the Mythos deities, Shub Nagarath is possibly the most extensively worshipped. The bulk of this entity's personality was further expanded in other media platforms and games. Spider of Lang These aptly named creatures first appeared in The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath. They resemble Earth's spider but exist on a much larger scale. 
ranging from the size of a small pony to sizes that dwarf Earth's largest land animals. They are remarkably intelligent creatures, but they are still not above or against cannibalism of their own kind. Much like terrestrial spiders, they are capable of spinning webs to disable their prey and deliver an extremely venomous bite. In Earth's dreamlands, they once controlled the entire plateau of Ling. Eventually, an extensive war forced them to abandon their homeland and retreat back to the southern mountains and vales of the land. This is where they occupy and defend their territory to this day. Zvilpagwa This entity, like the Shithak, was a name created by Clark Ashton Smith, but not greatly elaborated on. The author used Lovecraft's unfinished work as a foundation for Zvilpagwa in The Lurker at the Threshold. This entity, who also is known as the Feaster from the Stars, was reported to appear as a gigantic bipedal toad with no arms and instead a pair of enormous leathery wings. It had a large, lengthy neck and a face with a lower half covered in thick, grabbing tentacles. It was conceived on the planet of Yaksh, which we now know as Neptune. American Indians know the creature as Asadagawa, and it's known by that name in several other places. It's said the Native Americans summoned an avatar of this entity known as the Star Beast. Although it was only done in times of desperation, as once it had been summoned to this dimension, it had free reign to stay here as long as it desired, though it's uncertain what shape or form the Star Beast assumed. Idia. This entity is known as the Mighty Mother. She's said to be a colossal, pale, worm-like monstrosity who dwells under the surface of her planet. She's the half-sister deity of Cthulhu, although she also mated with Cthulhu to create a number of offspring, including Cthulhu, who was prophesied to rebirth Cthulhu. Idia also gave birth to the star spawn of Cthulhu in the Zoth star system. And when Cthulhu and his spawn traveled to Earth, Idia opted to stay behind on her homeworld instead. Cthulhu these creatures are more commonly known as the star spawn of Cthulhu, but they are also called Zothians from their planet Zoth. As far as appearance, they look physically similar to the great Cthulhu, but are much, much smaller. They were initially described as a land race of beings shaped like octopi and probably corresponding to the fabulous pre-human spawn of Cthulhu. They are also composed of matter not native to our universe, with physicality so malleable that they might be considered shapeshifters. It's speculated that the origin of such material has a vastly different governing law to it, making it far different than we can imagine. The Starspawn came to Earth to wage war against the Elder Things that were already inhabiting Earth. After time, the two races were able to establish peace, granting the land to the Starspawn, while the Elder Things retreated into the oceans of Earth. Much of the land that was being occupied by Starspawn eventually sank into the oceans, and from this point on, the Starspawn ceased to be a major power of the Earth, replaced by the Elder Things. And that's all for the Lovecraftian Entity Iceberg. Be sure to let us know what topics we should cover next. Thank you so much for watching. Maker, out.